Now for a very long time here in Diablo 2, the Hammerden has been known as the absolute slaying king. Now about a year ago from the recording of this video, actually Fist of the Heavens along with Holy Bolt got a change because now Holy Bolt deals damage not only to undead, but also to demons. Now that equals almost all of the monsters in the entire game. Now this change and some other subsequent changes, balancing patches, made this build very, very powerful. Now, is this build actually more powerful than even the Hammerton nowadays? Now, first off, which one of these builds can you actually get into first? A lot of times when people start off with the Paladin, they're gonna go into a Holy Fire build and then go into some sort of melee, usually that being eventually Zeal. But when you talk about going with the Fist of the Heavens Paladin, you can actually put a ton of points early on and go straight from the beginning technically into Holy Bolt. Now it's not optimal, but if you want to save a respec at a level 12 right here, I believe is what it is. Actually at level six, you can go into Holy Bolt and start pumping points into that one right there to boost up that damage. And on top of that, you're actually healing your own team if you hit them with that particular ability. Now you then would have to wait to get down to level 18 actually before you can put points into Plast Hammer. So that is much later so you no matter what you're going to have to do some sort of other spec like holy fire regardless now usually if you're gonna go fist of the heavens most people will go holy fire through a lot of the, at least normal because you can't actually get down to the actual fist of the heavens for the build until you're like level 30 if i'm not mistaken down at the bottom but with this being so close up here uh, you can go into holy bolt straight off the bat so even though you can't go straight off the bat, I would give this kind of as a wash because Hammers is so powerful early on and you don't really have the area of effect you get from Fist of the Heavens from Holy Bolt individually. And on top of that, also you gotta remember that Hammers deals damage to anything that's not magic immune and Holy Bolt is just demons and undead. So things that aren't demons and undead are things like Eldritch and Shank and uh, other different cows perhaps if you wanna level in there and find good items. So it's kind of a positive and a negative I would say this one particularly early off is kind of a wash. Now next up, what about the type of gear you need for each one of these builds? Well, actually this one's gonna come out as a wash as well because they both use almost literally the exact same gear all of the time. There's a few instances where you could find maybe different pieces of gear. You don't necessarily need to get to 125 break point for Fist of the Heavens because there is a delay dropping the actual Fist of Heavens down. But if you want to teleport around at the speed that you actually want to, you want to get to 125. But a lot of people only get to the 75 breakpoint with the Fist of Heavens Paladin. But if you're doing hammers, man, you want to get more hammers out there faster with the more FCR because that just equals more damage. But for endgame, you go with the same. This isn't a full build guide, but, you know, Hoto Spirit, Shaco Enigma, the Caster Amulet, Trangs, Arachnus Mesh, a couple SOJs, all these boots. Great build. And this is going to be perfect for both builds. Now, if you're talking about more of the basic, the budget, the incredibly early on stuff you wanna get, it's gonna be the same as any caster for both of them. You got the spirit shield once again, and you can put it in an incredibly low strength base because pally shields have lower uh, strength requirements than a spirit monarch would. And you wanna go with the spirit sword, stealth, lore, all the same stuff you would on any budget character. So once again, going for hammers and fists of the heavens, it's a complete wash on how you gear them and how you build them. There is one small exception though, because it is actually incredibly easy to do something like dual spec Fist of the Heavens. That's because Fist of the Heavens itself only has two synergies and one of them is for the lightning damage. And the lightning damage only comes down on the exact monsters that it strikes. So it's not even that beneficial necessarily to max out Holy Shock. Now, if you didn't want to worry about that, because really most of the damage comes from the spreading out Holy Bolts from Fist of the Heavens, uh, you go ahead and obviously max out Holy Bolt, the actual skill, because it's a, a synergy for the actual Holy Bolt damage. And then from there, you could do a ton of different things. You could actually put points into hammers in order to have it kind of a dual spec. So anything, let's say Eldritch and Shank, things like that, that aren't demons or undead, you can go ahead and take them out because hammers will still have a plenty ton of damage. On top of that, you can go ahead and put points into any of the synergies for uh, blessed hammers or anything that would help you out. On top of that, with Fist of the Heavens, you can go ahead and put points and get your smiter rocking. So maybe you want to put points into fanaticism to really help out your smite skill in order to deal more damage. So it can be a combination of Chaos Sanctuary Farmer and you can go ahead and take on things like Ubers or D-Clone. 
So really, when you talk about the build and skill points, there is some more build variety as far as it comes to Fist of the Heavens. So I actually got to give a little bit of a nod to the Fist of the Heavens build here on the actual skill tree part of the build. Next up, how powerful are they actually? Now, just for the testing purposes of this video, I got this set to Players 3 difficulty. And let's come out here and find some good packs. We'll drop down Grand Vizier over here to give us a good pack to test on right here. Now, these are an incredibly weak uh, style of monster, but watch when the Fist of the Heavens come down and it just wipes out the entire joint. Now, uh, let's go ahead and run over to another pack here and check out how quickly this takes out. How about Lord DeSace's group? Now, these can be dangerous, and what's good about this build here with actually dealing out the damage is you can do it from a distance. You don't have to worry about uh, Lord DeSace's pack just one-tapping you when they have the wrong combination of auras which has been known to happen to a Diablo 2 player from now and then. Now here we go and knock down uh, Lord DeSace's group over here, good old Ogre X, and on to Diablo. And this is all player three right here. Now let's see how quickly the Diablo kills go and with one single target, you wanna use Holy Bolt. Now let's go ahead and see if Diablo drops down. We'll hit him with Holy Bolt here over and over. And it's working perfectly good and well. Now on player three difficulty, not exactly the fastest on this particular individual target, but it definitely works reasonably well. Let's go ahead and see how the Hammered and fares on the same Player's 3 difficulty Chaos Sanctuary. All right, now let's see how this exact build's gonna go. I'm a little bit out of practice with the Hammered. I am not gonna lie, but let's go ahead and spin it up. But you see, as soon as one of these Hammers touches a monster, they really do just go ahead and drop down. Now you have to Tele Stomp them and then go ahead and spin up. Which means that this build actually, not that it has to literally have hammers, but boy, it is way better to uh, use a hammerton with an enigma than to not have an enigma, I'm going to be honest. So uh, that is one thing that is kind of important to note with this particular build. Uh, obviously, because Fist of the he Heavens, you can hit from a distance. It's not going to be as big of a deal if you don't have enigma. Because you can run around fast, you can use charge just to maneuver. And then you just drop them down from where, wherever. But as you see, you can't really target the hammers to actually hit the individual monsters unless you literally stomp directly on their heads. So we'll tell you over, get uh, Lords to Sace's group, and it kind of shows another small, small negative. Now, it does have a ton of survivability on this build, but you got to get right up in their business. You see that? And when you get right up in their business, that means Lord to Sace's group could cause you some problems if you're not literally invincible, which, I mean, who is always literally invincible? If anybody watches me, they know that's I'm not that guy. Once again, you see you're up there just eating fire, and my fire res is actually capped. Now, while I don't have a ton of fire uh, absorb or anything along those lines, you can see you can really take some beatings when you actually have these hammers. All right, now we'll go ahead and take on, this is the same player's three Diablo, and you can see that kill is way faster. Now these hammers by themselves, if you only take into consideration the amount of damage that each hammer does when it is hitting a monster, it is way more damage. So if we're talking strictly about the power of the attack here in this section, we gotta give the nod to the hammer. And those hammers just put out so much damage, even though the area of effect on Fist of Heavens, but we're talking about strictly the power here, giving that nod to the hammers. Now there's also another thing with Fist of the Heavens that I did mention a few times. Monsters such as this. Good old Eldritch and Shank out here. Now, as you can see, when I go hover over some of their names, they are not demons or undead. That's because these are considered, I believe it is beasts, which obviously is not demons or undead. So with hammers, you're going to absolutely wreck them down. Or if you go after Thresh Shock it, which would be somewhere out this way with any of the paladins here, if you're rocking hammers, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. But now, if you want to do that same exact thing, with Fist of the Heavens, you can see it's not working nearly as good because these guys are not undead or demons, so that means literally the only damage you're doing is the actual physical lightning damage that smites down from the top uh, on the one individual monster that you initially hit. So it does kind of almost absolutely nothing. Out here, it's kind of not even feasible to rock this particular build in places such as the Frigid Highlands. But all right, maybe we'll go out here and farm some cows with this Fist of the Heavens Paladin. I mean, they're at least, what, uh, undead cows, I hope? I hope? I hope? Ah, actually, alas, no. Cows is actually not going to work either for this build because 
they're just some kind of beast or whatever. They're just cows. They aren't undead, and they are not demon cows either. They're just regular old standard cows, I suppose. They look a little demonish to me. But, so, you gotta give the nod for, like, the variety of content that you can actually farm to the hammered in. Even though there's uh, certain instances, like Wave 2 of Bale and stuff like that, that the hammers just struggle with, you gotta switch over to something else. I feel like not being able to do cows, not being able to do things like Elgin Shank, all the different beasts and things like that, gives a slight edge to at least a variety of content that you can do over to the Hammered In. Now we did kind of touch on it, but I do want to mention, what about survivability? They have essentially the same survivability as, as far as like able to get resistances and different type of survivability skills that you can keep and use. Like obviously you can see up there, I actually remember to use Holy Shield this time. They all have access to that, but I would actually give the slight advantage to survivability over to the Fist of the Heavens Paladin. You actually have extra points left over if you weren't going to dual spec it. You could put points into things like the actual resistances over on the defensive auras. For every two hard points you put into this, it gives you one point to your total overall maximum resistance if you did stuff like that. But you also have extra points left over to do things like you could even uh, max out redemption if you wanted to. Not necessarily at all, but put points into salvation to use that when you needed to. Or uh, many different things over here on the defensive skill tree because there's so many points left over from this particular build. You don't have to use uh, two different synergies and have concentrate aura maxed out in order to get all your damage. There's just so much left. Actually, on top of that, you actually get to cast your spells, obviously, like I've noted a couple different times here, from a distance instead of getting right up in that monster's business, which, like I said before, Tally Stomp and Lord DeSace, uh, it sometimes can be a dicey proposition. So for survivability's sake, we kind of got to go with the Fists of the Heavens Paladin. So now that we've considered all of that, now, which one of these is actually the more powerful character? Now, this answer really is going to surprise you because in my opinion, they are literally absolutely even. They are slightly higher on one thing than the other one is on the other. But when you take it all into consideration in my book, based upon my play style, how I like to play, what I like to do, and what I've done with these types of characters, I think they are literally absolutely even in my book. I know this is probably going to be controversial. Hey, if you disagree with that, let me know down in those comments, fellas. Don't forget to like button and subscribe up before you go. And huge shout out to all the channel members here on YouTube, patrons, and even Twitch subs with your guys' support in the channel. You really do make it possible for me to keep making videos and streaming here on this channel and here on YouTube. So peace out, fellas, and don't forget, Keeps the land.